Today I want to summarize for you this book called The One Product Business. And I know this kind of counter, many advice that I gave you before that always is good to have more than one uh, source of income, but it's an interesting proposal, especially for people who are starting in business and also for people that maybe you already have a business, but you want to scale, you want to scale it to the next level. So stay tuned. We are going to analyze the one product business. Before continue, friendly reminder, you can go to inglesparacholos.com and please spread the word. Tell the people to go to Uncle Balta on Spotify. So let's say that you are starting, you want to do business, or maybe you already have a business. The question is, how can you select one product? There's a chance that you have many ideas in your mind. Try to find the product that is scalable. That is the first condition. The one that is scalable, I will say also the one that gives you the better lifestyle. You can add maybe some extra features. I will say the one that is uh, inflation and recession proof for example if prices go up can you increase the price and if your country go to hell can you keep selling to other countries that is also important and that is the reason why i am focusing more now on uh, english on the english paracholos because it's something that is easy to scale for me you need to find what is your proposal and try to go balls deep on that also you will find out that when you focus just in one product and i'm saying one product no service but we're going to check about that later when you focus about one thing, you have a laser focus, you have also efficiency because you start finding how can I do more of this and this allow you to produce it in a cheaper way. And if you do it like that, now you have bigger margins and that is also important. You want something that you can move volume, but at the same time, give you a lot of profit. The next part, we already addressed that it's important to have just one product, but also it's important to diversify your, your risk. How can you diversify your risk if you only have one product? First, having more than one customer. The person who only has one customer is called employee, empleado. <laughs> so that is the worst case of scenario because all your finance rely only on your boss or on the company that hired you. You don't want to be in that case. Even if your one customer is the government, that usually government tend to pay a nice amount of money, if that person knows that you are that they are your only source of income, they will start to treat you like a slat, like a hole, like a putita. So always you want to have more than one customer and always never allow one customer to um, be more than 50% of the money that you earn. Another thing that I would say, if you want to diversify your risk, is on your way to build this business, try to acquire some transferable skills. Why? Because if something happened to your product or your business, if it collapses, at least you know you have some skills that you can deploy in other areas. For example, in my case, I'm, I sell vitamins, I sell English, but also if something happened, I know that I can use the English for other purpose or I can use the podcast uh, skill for other purpose. So that's why you want to have also transferable skills. People who specialize too much in one thing, then they struggle when they want to jump to other area. And last but not least, to diversify or mitigate your risk, I would say is try to have a little cushion of money, un colchoncito de dinero, a little cushion of money of three months or six months that will allow you to have peace of mind. When you know that you have money in advance, now you will have a lot of new ideas because you are not spending time and a mental energy thinking of how to solve your next financial problem. Let's go to the next one. Why I mentioned that it's better a product than a service because a product is something easier to replicate and to scale and if you are selling a service i want you to go to youtube or google and check this out check how to productize a service and most of the time the best way to do it is standardize the process try to find what is that thing that always repeat in all the people now i when i have customers that are freelancers always i ask them what are those things that you repeat like huevonazo? <laughs> and those things that you repeat like huevonazo, try to find a technology or a person that can do it for you and you just get the last part, the part that you have to adapt. If you do it in this way, you will find out how much time can you release in your schedule. This part that I'm going to mention, by the way, everything that I'm saying now is something that I, I work with a customer today in the morning. So I hope you are writing down these ideas because these are so fucking applicable. You need to have a strong system and the only way to have a strong system is by documenting the activities that are within the system. 
Uh, how can you start? This is easy. For example, in the morning, you wake up. Uh, what do you do first? Maybe you go for a walk with your dog, 30 minutes. Okay, after that, you go to your PC. Do you turn on the PC or do you first check your activities? That would be a better way. First, check your agenda with what activities I have to do. Then I open the WhatsApp, I clean the customers. After that, I go to YouTube to find some topics for the day. I schedule in advance the content that I'm going to consume. I go back to, to WhatsApp and then I clean a, oh, I, I have a, a video call, for example. Basically, that is my schedule in the morning. You need to document your activities. When you do it like that, you don't have time to scratch your balls because you always know what is the next step, the next step. The situation that you don't want to be in is the one that many people have. Is that they are doing activity and then they go to Instagram and they start scrolling. And then, oh, shit, 30 minutes are gone. So you don't want to be in that. You want to run, to run, finish the block of activities and after that start thinking. Never think between the activities because that thinking will become the distraction. The other thing that I would say that is important that you analyze is how you are going to charge the money. Um, in some cases, for example, if you go to this place, SmartFit, what they do is they they charge a uh, one month and a half. In the beginning, they front load some money and then you pay monthly. In other jeans, they charge you in advance six months. You need to understand how you are going to charge, but always you want to charge something in advance. If you charge at the end, now you are fucked because you need to rely that your people are going to be reliable to pay. And especially in Latin America, not everybody is reliable. I have many friends that now are working with companies. And if you have worked for a company before, you know that usually they pay two months or three months after the service or product was delivered. And sometimes these companies go under, they, they are out of the market, and now you are in the air also. So... That's why be careful. Always try to charge in advance the money and try to find the best way to charge. If it's a recurring revenue model, could be if you just charge in advance, could be another one. If you are going to charge maybe 50% at the beginning and 50% in the middle, that could be also other way. But always try to have some money at the beginning. The next one is learn to say no to lower tickets deals. Um, this is a mistake that I made many years in my life and was always thinking, how can I add, for example, 500 soles or 1,000 soles to my income? So always try to find little projects that allow me to make some extra money. But if you analyze this proposal of the one product business, you find out that if you deploy that energy in your winner horse, that is your, your product, you can make even more money. Just to give you an example, I was uh, thinking about starting a line of maca negra, black maca. And I was thinking, okay, maybe if I start this line, I can make, I don't know, like 1,000 soles or 2,000 soles extra per month. So good money, right? But then I, thought, I found out, what happens if I just sell three extra customers of Inglés para Cholos? That is more money than selling like huevonazo de maca. And I'm going to get distracted with the maca thing. So that's why. Be careful with this little distraction. You only will accept extra uh, tickets or extra projects if they are more profitable than the ones that you are doing. But if not, don't distract with that. The next thing is, uh, and this is important, try to find different source of leads, different lead magnets, and try to improve the ones that you already have. This is also a big problem that I had back then in time. A uh, long time ago, I used to only use uh, Facebook as a lead magnet. And even worse, I only have one account. What was the problem with this? is that whenever I had a problem with my Facebook account, my lead magnet was dead, so I couldn't attract more people. That was a big situation. Now what I have done is I have two Facebook accounts, sometimes even three, so I have three accounts. If something goes down, goes wrong with one, you can use the other ones, and also try to use some parallel methods. In my case, it's YouTube. Also, I have some somehow some way of referral system, so different sources of customers. If something goes wrong, you know that, that customers will keep coming in other path. Talking about customers, also I want you to improve your conversion. You all know what is a sales funnel, un embudo de ventas. You know, you know what is that. But many people get distracted in bringing more, more customers or more leads to the sales funnel. Also a good question is how can we increase the conversion? If you have a website, and your website is converting 1%, if you increase that to 2%, you just double your income. So 
the time that you spend increasing your conversion is a big thing. Uh, your, your sales funnel is not only your website. The website is just one part of a sales funnel. So you need to check every step and always ask this question. How can I reduce friction? And the last thing, two things fast before I wrap this, this uh, episode. I want you to see your business as a money machine. And why? Because how a money machine works, you put the raw material and it throws bills, right? Okay, your business is going to be something that you put some money and it's supposed to throw even more money. But it's not going to be like that always. You're going to find what I call the bottlenecks. Something that if you keep bringing more money, eventually it's going to hit a bottleneck. So your job as a business owner is always increase the width of these uh, bottlenecks. One, one case, for example, in Inglés para Cholos, the bottleneck at the beginning was how to uh, put the new people on board in the system. So the new people was the thing that, take, that took me the most time. So now that bottleneck is fixed. Now I'm fixing the next bottleneck that is how to run the business part of the system. And um, always you want to check what is the bottleneck. You don't want to be busy running the business. You want to use your time to fix these bottlenecks and also to find the blind spots. If you focus in bottlenecks and blind spots, you will be surprised how fast your business will grow. Um, before wrapping this podcast, uh, I want to tell you that always ask how can you duplicate yourself with technology or with employees or people. Better always technology, but if you are going to do it with people, uh, I prefer to hire uh, freelancers instead of employees because the freelancers always want more from you, while the employees, they are, they are a fixed cost. But you need to analyze that by yourself. Before wrapping this episode, I want to share two things. I just had a customer in the morning and also a video call. And two things that we found out is that the biggest strength of a man is focus. Uh, well, many guys don't have that strength, but between the guys who have the focus, the problem is that they obsess just with one area of their life, and life is more complete. It's more than that. One of my customers, he was obsessed with the money part of his life. He already have money. He has uh, three hours free available every day, but he's depressed. And I understand this because I was in that situation in the year 2014. I remember back then in that year, I had a nice car. I had a, a big ass woman, una nalgona. My business was giving money. I, I didn't have the YouTube channel, so I had a lot of free time, but I was incomplete in my life. Something was missing. So you will find out that the idea is it's important to have focus, but always ask what is the area of my life that requires that focus now? That focus is going to shift. Always try to shift that focus where to the place that it needs you the most. And the other one is collaboration. Life is about collaboration. Who said that? The one and only Asher, the, the singer. And it's true. It's like uh, we want to do everything, but there is always someone that already accomplished the thing that we want to do. We can ask that person to give us the wisdom and do it faster. You don't need to figure it out everything by yourself. Always there is someone that already ran that path and can make things easier. Uh, just talking about fitness, for example. When I see people that go to the gym and they try to figure it out everything by themselves, oh, I will go to Google to chat GPT, ask questions, try to do, there is someone that is already maceta and is willing to share the fitness wisdom or the money wisdom or even the relation wisdom with you. Try to find that person, but remember this. First give value and after that you ask value back. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, if you want to join Inglés para Cholos, más 51 98 90 23 986.